Hi everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're going to talk about biological hierarchy. That is the hierarchical system of structures that makes up all of life. And you can see that it includes multiple levels, moving from the level of atoms all the way down to the biosphere. We're going to go through each one of these more specifically, but as we do, I want you to think about an important concept. And that is that each one of these levels has emerging properties. That is, properties that are specific to each level that were not present at the level above it. And these emergent properties are due to interactions. So it is these interactions that are critical for life. For example, at the most basic level, we have the atom. So atoms, even themselves, are made of smaller particles, being the protons, neutrons, and electrons that make up atoms. So atoms like hydrogen, like lithium, like carbon, these are the atoms that interact, there's that word again, that interact to result in molecules. And the molecules, like here we have water, this is sodium chloride or table salt, they have specific properties that are inherent to these molecules that are made possible because of the atoms that make the molecules up. That is, the important characteristics of water, things like its solubility, its ability to form hydrogen bonds, its polarity, these are all a result of the interactions between the oxygen atom and the hydrogen atom. Then, molecules can interact together to form macromolecules. For example, things like DNA or RNA, which is not pictured here, phospholipids, proteins, carbohydrates, and even these macromolecules are also made of smaller units. DNA and RNA are made of nucleotides, phospholipids are made of a polar head group and nonpolar fatty acid tails, proteins are made of amino acids, and carbohydrates are made of sugars. So you can see the way that these things interact, the way the the way those smaller monomers made of these different molecules interact to allow these different biological macromolecules to have function. Now, some lists talking about biological hierarchy jump from macromolecules to cells. Others include organelles as a separate level in the biological hierarchy. Of course, we know that cells are made of organelles things like the nucleus, the endoplasmic reticulum, lysosome, peroxisome, the Golgi, mitochondria, chloroplasts, ribosomes, etc. And so all of those organelles made of macromolecules are going to come together to allow cells to function. And again, it is the interaction of things like DNA and proteins and phospholipids that allow these emergent properties to exist in that cells have functions that the macromolecules or organelles themselves aren't able to carry out outside of that cellular environment. Now, some lists also have tissues, which are groups of cells, as an additional level in the biological hierarchy. Others jump straight from cells to organ. Of course, organs are made up of tissues. Organs themselves can be classified into organ systems, meaning that you have tissues that interact to make organs functional, you have organs that interact to make organ systems functional. For example, here we have a simplified drawing of the digestive system, which is made up of multiple organs. You've got the esophagus, the stomach, the small intestine, and the large intestine. So these are different organs that are interacting to allow organ systems to carry out their functions, which are a, a greater function overall than the individual organs. The organ systems come together to make organisms. For example, here, 
we can say that a lion is an organism. And a lion is made up of multiple organ systems that allow the lion to survive. A population would be a group of organisms of the same type, for example, a group of lions, otherwise known as a pride of lions, would be a population. A community is when you have multiple populations of different types of organisms, for example, lions and zebras. And if we keep with this theme of African savanna animals, an ecosystem would be made up of lions, zebras, and all other uh, populations that are present, as well as the environment. So the ecosystem is when you've got all of the organisms interacting with their environment. Some lists then include this additional level in the biological hierarchy, biomes, which are collections of ecosystems. And finally, the very greatest level of the biological hierarchy, the one that encompasses everything else, is the biosphere. And the biosphere refers to all life on our planet Earth. And so you can see again that with the biological hierarchy, it is about increasing complexity as you move through the hierarchy, each level acquiring new function and ability due to specific interactions pre present at the previous level. So that is biological hierarchy simplified. I hope you learned a lot and thanks for watching Biology Professor.